expired. Thank you. Senator Wyden. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Haspel, thank you very much for your courtesy in meeting with me yesterday. However, I regret to have to say there is no greater indictment of this nomination process than the fact that you are deciding what the country gets to know about you and what it doesn't. And so far, the American people have only been given information that is designed to help you get confirmed. Everything else has been classified. So I've got some questions. I think they're fairly short, and some I hope we can do yes or no. Now, you publicly released the Morell Report, which some have cited as reflecting favorably about your involvement in the destruction of interrogation tapes. Do you have any objection this morning to the public release of the Durham investigation, which would give the American people more information on the same topic and which does not come from the CIA? Senator, just to be clear, um, the request for the declassification of the Morrell memo was in response to a member uh, on this committee. Um, I have not read... Um, the Durham report, and I don't know the classification, so let me take that for the record, if I may. But do you have any objection? Well, I haven't seen it, uh, so I haven't read it, so I don't know. Well, I'm going to ask you about this in the classified session, but I think in the name of fairness with respect to your role on these issues, this ought to be made public just the way the Morrell report was. Now, on Sunday, the Washington Post reported that unnamed officials were pushing back against accusations that you supported torture in one of our biggest papers in the country. Between 2005 and 2007, the program was winding down. The CIA was capturing fewer detainees and waterboarding was no longer approved. During that time, did you ever call for the program to be continued or expanded? Senator, I think um, like all of us who were uh, in the counterterrorism center and working at CIA in those years after 9-11, we all believed in our work. Um, we were committed. We had been charged with making sure the country wasn't attacked again. And we had been informed that the techniques in CIA's program were legal uh, and authorized by the highest legal authority in our country and also the president. So I believe... Uh, I and my colleagues in the Counterterrorism Center uh, were working as hard as we could um, with the tools that we were given to make sure that we were successful in our mission. My, my time is short, and that respectfully is not responsive to the question. That was a period where the agency was capturing fewer detainees, waterboarding was no longer approved, and especially in light of that Washington Post story, I would really like to have on the record whether you ever called for the program to be continued, which it sure sounds to me like your answer suggested. You said, well, we were doing our job. It ought to be continued. That troubles me very much because you were the chief of staff to the deputy director for operations. It's a senior position. So I'm quite troubled by that. Response. Senator, may I just say that I, I don't, I, I haven't, I don't know which Washington Post story uh, you're referring to, but let me say Sunday. this about myself. Um, after 9-11, I didn't look to uh, go sit on the Swiss desk. I stepped up. I was not on the sidelines. I was on the front lines in the Cold War, and I was on the front lines in the fight against al-Qaeda. I'm very proud of the fact that we captured the perpetrator of 9-11, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. Uh, I think we did extraordinary work. To me, the tragedy is that the controversy surrounding the interrogation program, which, I've, as I've already indicated to Senator Warner, I fully understand that. But it has cast a shadow over what has been a major contribution to protecting this country. I respect a number of those points. I just am trying to get some answers here to questions that I think are particularly relevant. According to a press story today about the destruction of the interrogation videotapes, Jose Rodriguez told you in advance that he was going to take matters into his own hands. Did that conversation happen? Senator, no, it did not. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez indicated to me 
that he planned to discuss it with the then director, Goss. Let me see if I can get one last in on it. When did you become aware that the cable authorizing the destruction of the interrogation videotapes had been sent? Senator, as chief of staff, I, it's, a, it's a desk bound job, so I was at my desk at least 12 hours every day, and I could see my computer screen. So it was shortly after Mr. Rodriguez, who sat right across the hall from me, had released the cable. I'm over my time. I'll ask some more about this in the classified session. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Collins. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Senator Jack Reed and I co-sponsored the McCain-Feinstein bill that banned waterboarding and other enhanced interrogation techniques because we viewed them as contrary to American values and tantamount to torture. So let me ask you a series of questions. First, were you involved in any way in the creation of the enhanced interrogation program? Senator, I was not, and I was not read into the program until about a year into its existence. Mm -hmm. Were you a senior manager at the CIA at the time that the program was created? No. I had just returned from an overseas posting. I was a GS-15. I was not yet a member of the Senior Executive Service. Uh, I was assigned as a deputy group chief that's pretty far down the totem pole in a program that had nothing to do with the uh, detention and interrogation program. You said that the program had already been in effect for some time before you were read into it. What was your reaction when you learned of the program? Senator, it was a new subject for me. We, as I said, we lacked interrogation expertise at the agency. We didn't have interrogators. Um, I was told that interrogation experts had designed the program, that the highest legal authority in the United States had approved it, and that the President of the United States had approved it, as well as a trusted leadership at the Central Intelligence Agency. Have your views of the program evolved in the years following the attacks on our country on 9-11? Uh, Senator, they have. I think it's very important. I think for any leader, as you go through a career, uh, you have to learn the leadership lessons. Um, I'm not going to sit here uh, with the benefit of hindsight and judge the very good people who made hard decisions, who were running the agency in very extraordinary circumstances at the time. But as I mentioned, to this country has had the opportunity to reflect because we have some space, we're not fearing another attack, and we have, we have deliberated about the standard we want to use in interrogations, and that is the Army Field Manual. The very important thing to know about CIA is we follow the law. We followed the law then, and we follow the law now. But I would never permit CIA to resume an interrogation program. So that's in a very... Good segue into a very important question. As a candidate, President Trump repeatedly expressed his support for waterboarding. In fact, he said we should go beyond waterboarding. So if the CIA has a high-value terrorism suspect in its custody and the president gave you a direct order to waterboard that suspect, what would you do? Senator, um, I would advise, I do not believe the president would ask me to do that, um, but um, we have uh, today in the U.S. government other U.S. government entities that conduct interrogations. Um, DOD uses the Army Field Manual and they conduct battlefield interrogations. And CIA has incredible expertise it can bring to the table in support of those interrogations. The FBI has its authorities to conduct interrogations. And as you know, we have the high value interrogation group. So 
you know, I, I would be advise anyone who asks me about it that CIA is not the right place to conduct interrogations. We don't have interrogators, and we don't have interrogation expertise. So I believe that that would be my... The reason I have been nominated is that people have some respect for my views on these issues. My experiences during those days after 9-11 inform my views. I'm extremely knowledgeable, and I'm also extremely knowledgeable about the price CIA working level men and women out in the trenches paid for decisions made after 9-11. So debriefing a source is very different from interrogating a detainee. Should the CIA even be in the business of interrogating detainees? We don't, we're not in the business of interrogating. Because of the Hague is what you're saying. Well, we're not in the business of interrogating detainees. As you said, there's a big difference between interrogation and simple question and answer. Um, having access, direct access to a terrorist is extremely valuable for intelligence collection, and we do that. But CIA does not today conduct interrogations. We never did historically, and we're not getting back in that business. Thank you. Senator's time's expired. Senator.